With commodity prices dirt cheap, is there any hope for emerging market stocks? I'm Jack Otter, editor of Barron's.com. We have Todd McClone, an emerging markets portfolio manager at William Blair. So let's start with the view from on high. Uh, what hope is there for emerging market stocks with oil so cheap, metals and mining so cheap, because so many of them rely on sending these products to developed nations in China? Yeah, I think the, uh, the fallout in commodities obviously has been an overhang for emerging markets for the last uh, you know, year or two as we've seen this, uh, this, this, this fallout with commodity prices coming down and I think shale oil impacting the oil markets. I think it's overplayed though in EM. If you look at the emerging market uh, MSCI index, about 67% of the market cap actually benefits from falling, falling commodity prices because most countries are actually importers of, of commodities and oil. There are definitely winners and losers in this new scenario. I mean, winners would be you know, your Indias, Pakistan, Thailand, Philippines, all countries that import oil, import commodities, and have seen inflation rates come down and their central banks be able to cut interest rates, which has driven GDP growth uh, and earnings and, and earnings momentum. You know, losers obviously are your Russia's, Nigeria, Kazakhstan, uh, you know, for, for oil, and then on the other side with industrial metals, you know, Brazil, Chile, and Peru have suffered quite a bit because their exports are commodity dependent. So there's definitely winners and losers in this scenario. It's not all doom and gloom for emerging markets. I think you know, the, it's not the end of the world for emerging markets that, that commodities have fallen, but the world as we've known it has changed. So within those positive stories, the Indias uh, and so forth, what do you like? Yeah, I think uh, two of our favorite markets are India and Pakistan. Uh, they tick a lot of the important boxes uh, in terms of themes in emerging markets, which would be commodity importers, uh, reform-minded governments, uh, and, and, and positive accelerating GDP growth. If you look at India, we've had since Modi came to power, the BJP is a very pro-reform, pro-business go you know, pro business, uh, government. And, and the market has rallied. And the market's rallied a bit on that. Uh, but I think we're in the early stages of that. I mean, people say India is you know, kind of a consensus overweight. I think it is for emerging market managers, but I don't think global managers have really sniffed out the opportunity there. And that's a much bigger pool of money than, than, emerging, than the emerging uh, assets under management. Uh, and I think earnings in India are set to accelerate. I mean, you have revenue growth uh, in corporate India accelerating uh, because, uh, because GDP growth is accelerating. You have margins are set to expand because for the first time in, I think, seven or eight years, inflation is growing below revenue growth, so margins can actually expand. Uh, I think you're seeing interest expense come down because interest rates have been cut. We got a surprise interest rate cut just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and then Modi government being very pro-business, they're cutting the corporate tax rate from 30 to 25 percent over the next five years. So you're seeing revenue growth accelerate, margins expand, interest expense come down, and earnings uh, and, and taxes come down. So earnings are accelerating. If you look at India from 02 to 06, you had earnings doubled and the Sensex tripled. And between 02 and 08, I think earnings tripled and the Sensex went up, f went up five times. So you can really see you know, the market respond to, to a, a positive earnings cycle, which we have in India. So if you look across all emerging markets, valuations are pretty low. But if you look at a bright story like India, are valuations a bit elevated? They're, I mean, I think they're sort of at their long-term average. But I think what you'll find is the good stories, because there's few, and we're, there, there's few and far between, they're going to hold their valuations. Because in a world of scarce growth, investors will pay up for growth. And I think that's true everywhere in the world right now. Global GDP growth keeps getting revised down over and over again. You know, investors are chasing growth. And so those growth stories, like in India, a Pakistan, uh, or Mexico would be another place, you are going to see their valuations sustained because people are going to gravitate towards those stories. In, in, in a world of, of, of basically scarce growth, people will pay up for growth. And before I let you go, I have to ask, of course, about China. That seems to be the big story yeah. from Nike to Yum Brands yeah. to anything else. Uh, what's going on with China? Are we going to see the, the consumer finally take over? I think, you know, I think it's become incredibly fashionable to be a China hater at the moment. Uh, I think people are overly negative in China. If you uh, certainly the manufacturing sector is facing challenges. Uh, you know, you've had negative producer prices for over 42 months, which makes it difficult for that, that part of the economy. But 49% of the economy is service oriented. I think that part of the economy is probably going 8, 9%. Manufacturing is probably going zero. Uh, you know, and you do have, you know, retail sales are still growing 12, 13%. E-commerce sales are growing 40%. Real wage growth is 8 to 9%. And versus inflation of 2, that's real wage gains. Wow, that's so a I nice think, year. So I think, yeah, exactly. We're basically, you know, 2% wage growth here, I think is what we've been seeing. And it's been quite disappointing. 
So I think you know the consumption in China has been accelerating. There's other data points. You mentioned Nike. Uh, Nike reported last quarter 30% sales growth uh, in in China, and they mentioned that you know their sales were actually accelerating over the course of the quarter. You have box office revenues. You know, movie you know, people going to movies. Box office revenues are growing to 50% in China. They've accelerated month on month. You know, throughout the uh, throughout throughout this year, and also you're seeing property prices are actually starting to to improve. I was in Shenzhen just a week or two ago, and property prices are up 15 to 20%. Uh, you know, there's you know, then the overhang of property has been beginning to clear, and I think in tier one cities, year to date, I think property prices are up around 16 to 18 percent. Um, you know, so the, the property, I think, was people were worried this was going to really bring down the whole economy. I think the markets responded to some stimulus measures that the, that they've taken with cutting mortgage rates, cutting down payments, lifting home price restrictions. So inventory is starting to clear. There's still a long way to go. There's still probably two years of inventory in Chinese property, but the situation is improving. So I think, you know, the hard landing doom and gloom we've seen in China is a little bit overplayed and valuations are compressed. So I think we could see, see a rally in the China H share market. Good news in China. You don't hear that much. Thanks very much, Todd. You're very welcome.